Is it time to be worried about the future of Nick Lodolo? Is the time now for Edwin Arroyo? We are going to tell you all that and more on today's Locked on Reds. Let's go. You are Locked on Reds, your daily Cincinnati Reds podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. You are locked on Reds. My name is Jeff Carr. His name is Steve Offenbaker, and we are lifelong Cincinnati Reds fans that have turned an addiction to this team into information for you. I want to thank you for making time out of your day to listen to some Reds talk with us. We encourage you, if this is your first time, make sure that you're subscribed. Make sure you jump into our comment section. Make sure you join our conversation because we love talking about the Cincinnati Reds every single day with you here on the Locked On Reds podcast. We are part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team, every single day. And on today's podcast, we are going to look at some not-so-encouraging updates. I, I mentioned on Friday for our live show, our Aloha live show, that there were encouraging updates about Nick Lodolo's health. And then promptly after I mentioned that there were encouraging updates about Nick Lodolo's health, there were very discouraging updates about Nick Lodolo's health. So we're going to discuss that and what the ramifications could be. Plus, we'll give you a weekend update because a lot of good stuff happened out in Goodyear, Arizona, including Ellie hitting a ball a country mile, uh, the return of a Rookie of the Year candidate, and a little bit of clarification on some of the pitching uh, lines that we saw out of Goodyear. And also, Edwin Arroyo continued to play amazingly, but I'm going to tell you why you need to slow your roll on Edwin Arroyo. That's that's coming up later on in today's show. Before we get into all of that, I wanted to let you know that today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. New customers, join today and you'll get $150 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. And Steve, what we're going to I'm going to hijack the show right now because <laughs> I have a bone to pick with you from Friday's Aloha Live. And thank you so much for, for pitching in while I couldn't talk. I know I sounded like Batman when I called you on Thursday night uh, telling you that we had a problem. I'm so uh, serious. How could you have had a conversation about the best red to ever wear the number 27 and not talk about Mr. Red? Mr. Red wears number 27, Jeffrey. You didn't put a graphic up. You didn't talk about him. It's obviously the favored number in franchise history. It's on the darn logo. And you didn't even bring up Mr. Red. Shame on you. Hashtag I mean, Jeff hates Mr. Mr. Red. Red through. I mean, it, it hashtag Mr. Jeff Red hates through. Mr. Red. Jeff I mean, hates bats him. Is Mr. Red had. Jeff hates him. No. Terrible. No. You, you could literally make any old mascot, and that's the mascot. I'm talking about players. We talk about that. Players that affect the games. Mr. Red has no effect on the game. Yeah. Come on. Silly. He could have worn any number in that picture. He could have worn well, He doesn't wear any number. He wears number 27, and you failed to talk anyway. about him because, once again, hashtag Jeff hates Mr. Red. Nick Lodolo didn't get the greatest of updates on him. He pitched a live BP session on Friday. And or on Thursday, and we were waiting for updates on Friday. They didn't come in until later on in the evening. Didn't happen while we were on the live show. The updates, they were not encouraging. In fact, according to the updates about Nick Lodolo, the leg really hasn't gotten any better, or at least it, it hasn't gotten to the point that they trust the recovery. That's the key here is that it's all about the recovery process for Nick Lodolo. Now, he had a side bullpen session and all that other stuff yesterday, so we're going to await updates as to what might happen there. And for us talking negatively about his injury updates, maybe we'll get a positive one today. Who knows? But what we have heard, specifically what we have heard from Mr. David Bell, has not been encouraging. And, and Steve, before I get your reaction on this, this was what David Bell said about Nick Lodolo. Lodolo has no pain when he pitches, but the recovery is not perfect yet. He still feels it. Steve, it's been almost a year since this. Yeah, and that, and that prompted them to get another MRI. Uh, look, I'm going to try not to, to go straight worst-case scenario, but as you say, yeah. it's been a year. This is what I know. Uh, they shut him down last year. Now, they made the, they made the point to say 
if we make the playoffs, if we had made the playoffs, Nick Lodolo would have been available to us. And, um, you know, there's no way to disprove that. There's no way to prove it. It's just what they're saying. Yeah, and I uh, this is what land I land on the moon. Correct. He had an entire offseason off, a time where he should have been completely recovered, a time where he should have entered spring training and, and been ready to go. We are now four weeks into spring training, four weeks to Nick Lodolo ramping it up. And this thing is already a problem again. Now, as David Bell said, it's not seemed to bother him when he's actually pitching. Uh, Charlie Goldsmith, friend of the podcast from the Inquirer, posted video of Nick Lodolo's bullpen session from yesterday, and he looked just fine. Uh, the concern is that he feels it after. That just means something's not right in there. Something's not completely recovered. Uh, I believe that Lodolo had another MRI on Friday. After you did the live show, I think they did their MRI already and that the meeting with the specialists today is to review the MRI from Friday. Uh, trying to glean some positivity from this, Jeff, if there had been anything glaring on that MRI, they would not have let him throw a bullpen yesterday. So my hope is that, you know, we talked about India, right? We talked about Jonathan India and the plantar yes. fasciitis and that it's going to just have to be something he learns to live with. This could be a thing that Nick Lodolo just has to learn to live with if there is no structural damage in there. Uh, right. You know, I broke my foot many years ago, Jeff. I broke my left foot, had to have screws put in there, and I still feel it. If I put on shoes that are too tight, if I bang the side of my foot just right, I remember that I broke my foot a lot of years ago. Uh, I've had to learn to live with it. And that may be the case for Nick Lodolo. They're calling this a stress injury to the tibia. But there was really a, a hairline fracture in there as well. It, you know, it's not just a fatigued muscle. There's actually yeah. bone involved in this situation. So it, it may be. It may be where we see both India and Lodolo all season long having to learn to play through pain, having to learn to be successful while dealing with an injury. The good news is I feel like the Reds are built so that if Lodolo cannot go, they've still got some guys who can step in for him. And while I definitely want to discuss that here in just a moment, the other thing that I think with all of this, and I, I love the positivity from you, and I love the positivity from the management staff, they did actually give us a timeline. They said if Nick Lodolo gets into game action, they said that he could be ready and he could be able to ramp up for opening day if he gets into game action by the end of this week. So we kind of have a timetable here. If we don't see him in a game in Goodyear, then we know it's going to be a delayed start to the season for him. But I just, I look at this and I kind of chalk this up into the over-optimistic category. We, I kind of joke, you know, off air that David Bell is the most positive prognosticator when it comes to prognoses of health. When, when it comes to somebody that's hurt, I'm pretty sure if you, you know, if, if you come up to him with somebody that's, you know, missing a leg, he's going to say, well, that leg's going to grow back next week. It's it's going to be back and he'll be back on the field. I, I just think there's an element of like a grain of salt that we need to take with this. So with that being said, Brandon Williamson or Nick Martinez, because now I'm of the mind and as optimistic as I love to be about our favorite ball club, I'm of the mind. He's not going to be ready for the first week, two weeks, whatever it is. So that fifth spot in the rotation is going to go to somebody else. Is it Nick, Nick Martinez or Brandon Williamson? If I had to make a decision right now, if I had to to go on record, which seems like that's what you're asking me, I say it's Brandon Williamson. I think by going with Brandon Williamson, you have a guy that you clearly intend to keep stretched out as a starter anyway, whether it's at the big league level or at the AAA level. You've got Nick Martinez, who is designed right now to be your swingman in the bullpen, be your mm -hmm. long innings eater over there, multiple innings guy, and an emergency starter, a a a backup option for a doubleheader, things like that. Not necessarily a guy that you're going to run out there every fifth day, even though I know that's what they said when they signed him, things have changed. So for me, it makes the most sense to let Williamson start the season in the rotation. And I, I would have to go look at the schedule. I haven't looked just yet when they'll actually need a fifth starter in April. I know it's always a few weeks in before they even need that fifth starter. So uh, for me, it makes the most sense to get that bullpen settled and set Go north with the guys that you want to be the best eight arms in that bullpen. And I think that includes Nick Martinez. And then you use Brandon Williamson as a placeholder in the fifth spot in the rotation until such time that he can be replaced by Nick Lodolo. 
they do it is interesting because they they obviously have the friday off day because you have opening day on thursday friday off day then saturday sunday then they go to philadelphia for three games and then they have another off day the following thursday they might be able to get by at least for a week then they go on a stretch where they don't have another off day for two weeks so it's so into the second, so the second turn through the rotation basically is what you're yeah. saying because the opening day starter could start the fifth game of the season because of the one off game, and yes. then the second time through they would need a fifth starter. Yes, yeah, you you would run into the situation where you would need your fifth starter there around Tuesday, um, the second week there into April. So conceivably, if Lodolo is just a little bit behind, he still could make his first start in a scheduled manner assuming he's the fifth guy, but I look at this and I say, I don't think he's going to be ready. I'm, I'm happy with the positivity and I want to hear some positive news today, but I'm going to chalk it up to the Reds are probably getting into their depth a little bit earlier than they thought they were going to. Yeah. I don't think it's time to panic on Lodolo, but it's definitely time to be very concerned depending on what we hear later today and what we hear heading through this week. And if we don't see Lodolo before the end of the week, well, that pretty much tells us everything that we need to know about what the start of this season is going to look like. All right. Outside of the Nick Lodolo news, Jeff, lots of things happened over the weekend, including the return of a rookie of the year candidate. We're going to get you all caught up coming up next. Before I do that, I want to shout out the sponsor of today's podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Get buckets with your first bet on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Because right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets back with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 bucks in your account if your $5 or more bet wins. You can bet on all of your favorite NBA action and players uh, and teams with quick bets, Live, same-game parlays, exclusive props, and much, much more. They've got over-unders for basketball, so Jeff has something to play. There is a little something for everyone over at FanDuel. So just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and shoot your shot today and put your sports knowledge to work for you and put some money in your pocket along the way. If you're looking to do some baseball bets to get the season started, to get your juices flowing, well, FanDuel's got something for you right now. Noel Viar Marte. Is 11 to 1 odds to win the National League Rookie of the Year. If you're wondering, Yamamoto is the favorite, having never taken a major league at bat or American professional at bat for that matter. Plus 180. He's the favorite over there. I'm going with Noel V. Marte. If you want to get in on the action, head to fanduel.com slash locked on. FanDuel is an official sportsbook partner of the NBA and the official sportsbook of Locked On. Speaking of Locked On, Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts like Jeff and I, plus Locked On's national shows covering each and every league. Just go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. All right. Coming up on the next episode of Locked on Reds, it may be difficult for Reds players in 2024 to win individual accolades, individual awards, say Rookie of the Year, say uh, MVP, say Cy Young, those type of awards. Uh, we're going to tell you why it's going to be hard for them coming up on our next episode. But Jeff, there is still a lot to talk about today. Let's get kind of caught up on what went down over the weekend out in Arizona in Cactus League play. Lots of things happened. Uh, one of the things we talked about early on, Jeff, is that the starters were all just going out there and being lights out. Everybody was coming out, pitching their couple innings, not giving up any runs, and then getting into the locker room unscathed. That changed over the weekend. Uh, in fact, we saw it pretty prevalently yesterday as Frankie Montas started against the Kansas City Royals. and he got roughed up a little bit. Yeah, he gave up some runs, gave up some hits, but I think this is interesting, and he had a great response for this because we've talked about this before. If you really read too much into pitching lines and box scores and things like that for spring training, pause. Pause for just a second. Uh, no, definitely one of the things, you don't really have my fastball command today. You did not. Uh, that was something that was really inconsistent. Um and I mean the difference when 
I feel for any pitcher that don't have fastball command, you know, it's going to have a tough day for sure. But I um, don't see that as a tough day. I see us uh, just trying to get my pitches in, you know. At the end of the day, that's, that's what we're trying to do in spring training, you know, keep, keep trying to uh, figure things out, you know. I feel like uh, even after the homers, I went out there and I was trying to still attack in the sun and throw the strikes, you know. And uh, like I said, just trying to get my pitch in, my pitch kind of up, you know, to try to get ready for the season. That's the key right there. What he said at the end, just trying to get his pitch count up. That's what these pitchers are doing. Like, especially for a guy like Montas, who as long as he is healthy, he is going to be in this rotation. It is not about, you know, the results. It's not about how many strikeouts you have. Although we will get excited about the strikeouts. We will get excited about the no walks. We'll get excited when they have good outings, but also understand that that doesn't necessarily mean a ton. Meanwhile, giving up runs giving up blocks, giving up hits, not getting a lot of strikeouts. That also doesn't mean a ton either. It's about getting ready for opening day. Yeah. And anytime a professional pitcher doesn't have command of their fastball, they're going to have problems. Uh, the thing, the key takeaway there is that he continued to battle through it. And as he said, get that pitch count up, get the work in because it's all about stretching out. Right. And, and he was probably, he said he was working on things that tells me he was probably throwing pitches in situations that he may not necessarily have done in a regular season game. Uh, also the fact that he didn't have his fastball and they let him continue to heave those pitches up there to stretch out, to get the work in. That's something that doesn't happen in regular season games, unless you're, uh, who has it been lively that David Bell left on the mound for his <laughs> arm to just fall off? Or ben Unless you've been lively, oh, you know, you would get yanked from a game where you did not have control right. of your fastball. Uh, but you know, I'm, it's, it's, it's fine. There's nothing to worry it, about with Frankie Montas. And, and I kind of like a game like this in spring training for a guy like Montas for that reason. Like if you don't have command of your fastball that he threw a decent amount of time last year, this is going to force you to throw your other pitches. It's going to force you to get a feel for him, work on the grip, work on the placement, you know, the feet, all the different stuff when it comes to your secondary pitches, because at the end of the day, the number of pitches is your goal. It's not, you know, get a win. It's not, you know, keep your ERA clean or whatever. Uh, really, the only goal that they've set other than get your pitch count up is how many strikes are you throwing? What is the percentage of strikes that you're throwing? That's the only thing that the Reds have really set for their pitchers in spring training. So I, I think that it's important to note, to note that and, and also realize that a game like this for him now is very beneficial once the season starts. No, absolutely. And, you know, moving into the offensive side of things for some guys out in Goodyear, uh, there was another homicide of a baseball where Ellie De La Cruz murdered yet another baseball, 470 plus feet, I think 477, somewhere in that neighborhood. I know it was right. 470 plus. Uh, Ellie De La Cruz homers. Those are the things we need to start seeing from Ellie De La Cruz. Suffice it to say, like he hits this ball and I saw the videos, different angles and stuff like that. He hits this ball. Not only do the fielders not move, but the people in the outfield, cause they had like a grass berm in the outfield, the people in the grass berm in the outfield don't move to go get this ball because it's out of the ballpark. There's nowhere for them to go get it. It's gone. They'd have to leave and get another ticket and come back in. They ain't dealing with all that for a spring training baseball. He absolutely clobbered this pitch and i was trying to get a clip of it the audio wasn't great you can kind of tell the audio on that montas clip there uh, was a little bit low and there was like a really loud light overhead i didn't want to bump up the volume too much of the the light so that everybody's just mm, whatever but there was a clip of ellie talking after the after that game and he had a really great quote because charlie asked him you know that was really the first pitch that you've kind of come around on and pulled uh, you know, and you've hit a lot, other, uh, a lot of other hits to the opposite way this this uh, spring training. Has that been a focus for you? You said, yes, use all fields. That's what I'm looking to do in spring training, and that's what I'm looking to add to my game here. And I, I love that because, again, not only are pitchers working on stuff, but so are hitters too. Well, and you can add up all of those things, right? We hear Ellie talk about using all fields. We've seen video of him working with Brett Butler on getting a, a bunt bunch. as part of his arsenal. And look, listen, I am not advocating for LA to try and bunt every single game, but if he's got that in his pocket and he can use it to draw infielders in uh man, can you imagine? I, I, I think I said this when we talked about this with Jason Williams, 
drawing an infield in and then having him smoke one at you at 115 miles an hour it just seems it just seems unfair I think if if I can translate uh, for everybody at home, I think what you're trying to get at is you don't want none unless you got bunts, hun. That's what you're that's what you're saying. Uh, but also there was some great uh, <laughs> some great positive developments as well because Will Benson hit against left hit against lefty pitching and he got a double off of a lefty on Sunday. He was asked about that after the game. He was asked about working against left-handed pitching this spring training and if that's been a focus. Absolutely. Yeah. I um, requested that when I when I first showed up at spring training. I talked to Brad and then I talked to um, DB about it. Um, and I spoke with Charlie too about it. You know, kind of understanding like what was that you? That was you learned. Yeah. More, more so uh, it, it's, it is about hitting lefties but it's also being a complete player. But I think uh, that was one of my intentions coming in. Yeah, baby, complete player. Let's go. Well, sounds Benson, like somebody wants to be an everyday player. That's what yeah. it sounds like to me. Uh, you know, and and kudos to Will Benson for recognizing that that is a weakness in his game. That is something that he needs to improve. And there's an opportunity for him if he can start hitting left-handed pitchers better. He'll play more. And I know these guys want to be on the field and want to play more. I, I'm pulling for him, but you can't. You cannot make that be your strategy. Your strategy cannot be Will Benson's going to play every day because we just don't. Yes. Know. So somebody needs to be getting ready with India battling plantar fasciitis. Now uh, I'm going to need to start seeing one of Noel V. Marte and C or CES taking some reps in the outfield. They need another right-hander that can play in the corners and they don't have it. And it's running out of time. And speaking of which, Noel V. Marte returned to the field. That was good to see. Got to play on uh, in Friday's game. And he had a quote after the game as well where he said, I will be ready for opening day. Love to hear those words. And not to be forgotten, your guy, because you have a couple of bandwagons that you are the president of. Will Benson being one, TJ Friedel being the, the other. Get on the train right now, baby. <laughs> Uh, does do you get like does Will Benson like sponsor you? I, anyway, I'm waiting for the TJ Friedel. TJ Friedel on Sunday against the Royals, a three hit day. Jeff, three for three for your leading off center fielder, playing every day, left handed candidate. Third, third in the major league for every single center fielder that played in the major league. Third in WAR last year. Doesn't get on some top ten list. You got to give me get out of here with that crap. TJ Friedel's a good freaking center field showed it on Sunday with a three hits. He's ready. He's ready. He's going to kill it. All right. This is what we know, Jeff. There's progress everywhere right now. There is some areas to be concerned about, but there's progress everywhere. And there is a ton of spring training to go. A ton of spring training to go. And coming up next, slow your roll on Edwin Arroyo. Before we get into that, though, I want to tell you about another one of today's sponsors. And that is game time. Game time is the best way to get last minute tickets to your game, whether it be the Reds game or if you're on the road, you're, you're following the Reds along, or if it's a different season, if you're talking about hockey, if you want to go to a Cyclones game, if you want to go to some basketball, see the Bearcats, see Xavier, see Dayton. Dayton's actually better than both those guys right now. You can get some tickets on game time right now. Plus, if you download the app and you use the promo code locked on, save $20 off your first purchase plus they've they've got things like uh, theater events and uh, comedy events uh, you can go see different uh, uh shows that are going on around town it's not just sports it's an all-encompassing entertainment app to get tickets to your next night out so check out the game time app today steve and i always tell you this is how we get into the ball game all the time if we don't have tickets pre-purchased, and believe you me, Steve's about as planned out as I am, and that's not very planned out at all. So we just love to go last minute. Game time's the way that we do it. You know why? Because they got last minute tickets at the lowest price, guaranteed. Thanks as always for making Lockdown Reds your first listen every single day. And in between episodes, you can follow us on Twitter, X. You can follow me at Jeff Carr with three Fs. You can follow Steve at S Offenbaker with two Fs. And you can follow the show. There's no apps in that. Also, bookmark inside the reds.com. We're writing over there. Um, I, I've got some posts that will be coming up this uh, week 
the ultimate guide to the 2024 Reds. I've got a post breaking down starting pitching, bullpen pitching, catchers, infield and outfield. Worked a little bit on this, Steve. I, I wrote a few words, like at least 20. Uh, and, and, and I really think that it's going to be something, if, if you, if you want to know the basics of the 2024 Cincinnati Reds, got it coming for you over at InsideTheReds.com. And by the way, join the Lockdown Reds Discord chat got a link in the description of today's episode a lot of great folks talking reds baseball all throughout spring training and as the season nears along as well every single day all right steve I, I, look and, and i want to preface all of this i want to preface everything that we're about to say by saying this edwin arroyo rocks edwin arroyo has been so fun to watch so fun to listen to this spring training the different things that he can do with a glove, the things that he's doing with a bat out in Goodyear. It's phenomenal. I'm very happy to see and hear it. But, but for everybody that's like, this guy's got to be on the major league roster this year. No, he doesn't. No, let's everyone take a breath. Uh, look, and I know you said on Friday's Loha Live that uh, Arroyo hadn't reached double A yet. And, and yeah, I erred on that. Yeah, I, I, yeah. Get to uh, the plan for Arroyo this season is going to be, he's going go, to go back to Chattanooga. He's going to start the season in double A. Now, maybe he won't be there very long. Maybe he'll play uh, right. first fourth of the season in Chattanooga before getting a promotion to triple A. Unless there's a lot of injuries at the big league level, I just don't see any scenario where Edwin Arroyo makes the big league club in 2024. They're not going to start his clock. They really don't need him unless somebody is completely as a disaster in their sophomore season or they're injured. Uh, this is the year for him to really go to double A, then triple A, and solidify himself and finish the work that he needs to do to be ready to compete for a job in 2025. Because remember, a call up of Edwin Arroyo is means it's time for Ellie De La Cruz to find a new spot because they're not going to move Arroyo off of shortstop. Ellie's going to have to play a different position. And if that's third base, that means Marte is going to have to play a different position. There's going to be a real domino effect to Edwin Arroyo going to the majors. So I don't see that happening this year. Uh, listen, he's had a great spring. He, after an 0 for 2 day yesterday against the Royals, he's still hitting 500 on the yeah. spring. Uh, he's doing things, but you know, this feels a lot like the way everybody reacted when a certain shortstop named Jose Garcia, now Barrero was working his way through the red minor league system. And we saw how that turned out. Barrero shout out to him. Uh, homered also yesterday against it. forgot to mention that. But, uh, but I think we don't need to rush this. I think we as reds fans have a tendency to, kind of overhype the prospects, put too much pressure on them, expect too much from them right out of the gate. Uh, and then it leads to, you know, this house of cards falling that we've created. Uh, we don't need to do that with Arroyo. He can go work his way through the system and be ready to compete in 2025. Yeah. Shout out to the folks in the comments section from Friday, uh, setting me straight on that one. I was, I was wrong about him not touching double a, but I mean, I mean, he's going to start there this year. No, Alvi Marte started, uh, last year in double a and found his way to the major leagues. But I want to put point out the key difference here because Marte found his way to the major leagues because there was a need because there was a lack of really answers. I mean, this roster this year has plenty of answers. There's no Kevin Newman's here. There are no Will Myers here. There's no guy. There are no Jason Vossler's here. This is a full roster. This is a complete roster. This is a team that sands a lot of injuries, like you said, doesn't need Edwin Arroyo. And because of that, they're not going to rush him. And I saw a piece in the Inquirer from Gordon Whitmire talking about, you know, this team was such a youth forward team, a forward thinking team when it came to calling up their rookies and, and not worrying about, you know, when they're starting their clocks and all this other stuff. Now they have the luxury that they can kind of play with that a little bit. It's not going to be every year that you call up the number of people that the Reds called up last year and you get the kind of contribution that they they get from their call-ups. I really think that we need to give Edwin Arroyo a moment. Plus, you add in the fact he's 20 years old, Stephen. He, like, just turned 20 years old. We're not talking about a guy who's 23, 24 years old and we need to, you know, like, get this moving. 
we're talking about a kid that's still got plenty of time to really develop and hone his game in. And I want him to do that. I want him to feel much more ready. Plus, and you mentioned this already about the Jose Barrero thing, the Reds did this and, and, and the report, the reports are that Edwin Arroyo has a major league glove right now. Jose yeah. Barrero. And at the time, Jose Garcia had a major league glove in 2020 and he had a triple a bat. And I don't think that bat has ever developed since then. And I don't want that to happen to Edwin Arroyo. And I'm not saying that's the same thing. I'm not saying you can compare the two that they're the same player, but I'm saying that if you don't have to, bring him to the majors right now then don't do it yeah there's there's no reason to rush it and while we're doing a while we're doing a slow your roll segment here on the show let's transition to another guy for just a minute jeff with this last couple minutes and let's take the same same kind of pause when we start talking about blake dunn because he's Hmm. done some things in his first few games he's hitting 800 right now three games into to his spring training career there for the Reds this year. And I get it. Everyone thinks he could be that right-handed outfielder we're looking for. And by the end of the season, he very well could be. We've talked about him a bunch of times in Chattanooga in 77 games last season, Jeff slash line of 332, 433, 556. He needs to start the season at triple a. If he continues to smash the cover off the ball for the first, I don't know, let's say may. If he gets to May and is just still tagging the ball, there needs to be a conversation about him being a right-handed platoon partner in one of these outfield spots in Cincinnati. But I think he needs to prove just a little bit more. He did a lot. He grew by leaps and bounds last season. But again, he did not rise past AAA. 77 games for Chattanooga. I want to see him at AAA. I want to see that it's real. I want to see that he's ready. And if we're comparing the two, who's more likely to get playing time for the Cincinnati Reds in 2024? I think Blake Dunn more so than Edwin Arroyo. Yeah, and he's he's got a different situation where there is an opportunity perceivably if, you know, some other gambles that the Reds are making don't pay off. And he is older than Edwin Arroyo is. He's the kind of guy he's that when you bring him up, it's like, okay, that's, you know, that makes sense. You're not rushing him. And I, I, I do think I've liked all the reports that we've had. We talked about Blake Dunn a little bit over the offseason in that, you know, could he be the next TJ Friedel? Because he's not necessarily high up on anyone's prospect list for the Reds, but he is intriguing. There's a lot of people that include him in the, the you know, the honorable mentions or the also rans or the, the guys that they're like, okay, he's not making the top 10 of this organization, but you need to keep an eye on this guy. They all talk about Blake Dunn. So when it comes to what we could see out of him this year, I think that he is in a group of two with Rhett Louder in that if we see anybody as far as prospects go, I think it's going to be those two guys. Yeah, I think that's fair. And that is a great spot to go ahead and wrap it up for today. That's going to do it for this edition of Locked on Reds. Thanks for always making us your first listen every day. Every day is coming up on the next Locked on Reds. We're going to be discussing why it may be difficult for any individual Reds player to win an individual award, say Cy Young, MVP, uh, Rookie of the Year even. We're going to tell you why it's going to be hard for them. We appreciate you being here. Make sure you click the subscribe button, the notification bell, the like button, so that you don't miss a single episode. Jeff, what can the folks count on from me and you uh, the rest of spring training as we just are screaming towards opening day just a few weeks away? They can expect us to be all over the post-game interviews, the pre-game interviews, the anytime interviews that coaches and players give to the media. They can expect us to be all over what's happening on the field and the big takeaways and things that you should be focusing on because you can expect us to be locked on Reds every single day. Does game time sell tickets to your one-man show, Bearded Man Falls Off Rowing Machine? (laughs) 